operational inspection and testing. All information expressed by Standby Power Solutions, LLC, or its officers is strictly the opinion of Standby Power Solutions, LLC. Every week, inspect all generator components. Check the fluids, check the oil, the fuel, and the coolant. Inspect the system. Look at the belts and hoses. Make sure the belts aren't cracked or loose. Make sure the hoses are not leaking or cracked. Check the generator's output breaker. Make sure it is in the closed position. Look at the illustration there to the right. Closed and on are the same thing. You'll see the toggle is up. Off or open is the lower position when the toggle's down. It says O for off. If the toggle is in the mid position, that indicates it's tripped. Check the fuel delivery system. Look at the fuel lines. Make sure you don't have fuel leaking out anywhere. Make sure the fuel lines are not cracked or loose. Check the fuel level. Make sure you have adequate fuel to run the machine. Now, the engine is equipped with a coolant heater. This is an electric heater intended to keep the coolant at a warm enough temperature to start the engine even in the worst conditions. We like to see that temperature around 90 degrees Fahrenheit no matter how cold it is outside. You can get an infrared thermometer like the one pictured to the left. They're fairly inexpensive and they're available in a lot of different locations. Every week, check the batteries. Now you may check either the electrolyte levels or the battery voltage. In the picture to the left, I have indicated where the cap is. Now caps may be removed to check the electrolyte level or to check the specific gravity. Keep in mind, however, that that electrolyte is sulfuric acid. It will burn you. It'll burn holes in your clothes. So take appropriate precautions. Now the picture to the right shows a maintenance-free batteries. Many batteries now supplied with generators are maintenance-free and there is no access to the electrolyte. The picture in the middle shows a dirty terminal. Keep your terminals clean and tight. If you prefer to test the battery voltage rather than the electrolyte level, you'll need to use a multimeter like the one pictured on the right. Now those meters are inexpensive and they're available nearly everywhere. What you would do is touch the positive lead to the pole where I have the red arrow indicating and the negative lead to the pole where I have the green arrow indicating. That should give you an accurate voltage reading. During your weekly inspection, make sure all controls remain in the automatic mode. All information expressed by Standby Power Solutions, LLC, or its officers is strictly the opinion of Standby Power Solutions, LLC. Standby Power Solutions, LLC, disclaims any liability for any personal injury, property, or other damages of any nature whatsoever, whether special, indirect, consequential, or compensatory, directly or indirectly resulting from the publication use of or reliance on this website or any information derived thereof. Standby Power Solutions, LLC, also makes no guarantee or warranty as to the accuracy or completeness of any information contained herein. Anyone using this website should rely on his or her own independent judgment or, as appropriate, seek the advice of a competent professional in determining the exercise of reasonable care in any given circumstance. All rights reserved, do not reproduce without express written permission.